morning. Welcome to the Bond Sunday Morning Services. My name is Jesse Peterson. I appreciate you being here exploring your faith hour today, except that we're doing something different today. We are performing a wedding today. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> we are performing a wedding today, so uh, I know that folks are watching around the world, so that's good. Good morning to everybody here. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, y'all. Are you nervous about the wedding? <laughs> no? I feel like I'm getting married. I'm going to have to kind of follow lead here with the wedding thing. We're going to start the wedding at 11.30. They'll come, they'll come out at 11.30 uh, because it's an hour program, and a wedding normally takes about 20 minutes or so uh, to perform the whole thing. Uh, and so while we're waiting, I just want to share a few things with the folks who have not been here before. You don't know what we're about. I am a uh, founder and president of BOND, the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. And our purpose is to rebuild the family by rebuilding the man. Uh, we've been around now for about 23 years. Come February, if God is willing and the creek don't rise, it will be 24 years. We have a home for young men, and we bring them in from around the country. We counsel with them. We uh, help them finish school. We tutor them, and you know, all kind of good stuff to help them get their life together. Um, we, uh, this past September, we started our Bond Leadership Academy for Boys and Girls, a private school because a lot of these boys and girls are coming out of the uh, public school system, but they're not being educated, you know. They're, they're, they've been dumbed down. They don't know how to fill out, fill out applications. They don't know how to do anything. So we decided to start a private school for boys and girls. Originally, it was just for boys, but we got requests from different mothers who said, you know, I have daughters, and... Um, I want to do it. I want my daughter to go there. So next year, it's opened up to girls as well. Um, we are shutting down the barn home because we're going to build a dormitory setting for boys and girls who are coming out of the inner city areas or from around the country, and they don't want to go back into that environment. We'll have a place to house them. So we're going to be uh, doing that as well. Um, our primary thing is to show all people, uh, but especially black Americans, but all boys, men, young and old, and ladies, how to take hold of their lives, how to be free, and how to have, you know, self-control. And that primary thing is to show them how to overcome anger, how to get over that anger. Because if you can get over anger, life is easy after that. And um, what I've noticed over the last 23 years, everybody and their mama are angry. And I have to tell you, there is no reason, there's never, ever, ever, ever a reason for a person to be angry. Not one reason at all. You can't think of one reason to be angry because anger separates you from God and Satan become your father. And when Satan is your father, you're living in darkness, and wrong seem right, right seem wrong. And you're never, ever, 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 ever able to make the right decision when you have anger. You can read um, the Bible until the cows come home. You can, you know what it means for the cows to come home, right? Anybody don't know? <laughs> Uh, you can go to church and lift up holy hands. You can pay your tithe and offering. You can quote scriptures like 90 going north. But if you have anger, you're still separated from God. You have no love, none at all. And you're very insecure. You have doubt. You have fear. You have worry. You have insecurity. And you're always looking outside for the answer. And so we show these guys how to forgive so that they can be free, and, and girls, ladies too. And what I found that most of the anger starts in the home first. 
you know, because there's always some kind of battle going on with parents in the home, and that is being passed down to the children. So we get them to forgive their parents because the parents know not what they do. They couldn't help themselves. You know, they didn't have a baby just to make it unhappy. It's just that they never overcame. They were never able to overcome their own anger, and they passed it down. So we showed them how to overcome their anger. Nelson Mandela said something that was very interesting, I thought. Uh, I wrote down part of it, but I didn't write the whole thing. Nelson Mandela was uh, expired yesterday, I guess. Was it yesterday? Thursday. Thursday. And Nelson Mandela, uh, everybody knew who he was, right? Yeah, out of South Africa. And one thing that he said, uh, he said that as I walked out of the doors toward the gate that would lead to freedom, I knew I had to forgive, otherwise I would still live in prison. I would still live in prison. And what I find is that most people live in prison because they are unwilling to forgive. They are absolutely unwilling to forgive, and they are not free. And so that's why it was so important that you forgive. Nelson Mandela also said that, um, well, it was said about Nelson Mandela that when he became president, he invited some of the inmates, the white inmates from the prison that had treated him really mean and badly and all that, he invited them for dinner, to come and sit and have dinner with him because he had no grudge anymore. He didn't hold anything against them. And I'm like, wow, that's really, that's something else. When I, we have people that are family members that won't do that, you know, that hate one another, won't have dinner with a family member because you're mad at them or, or someone, you know. And, Mas- and Nelson Mandela invited white folks that had treated him in a bad way to dinner. And it's that kind of love that we're supposed to have. Martin Luther King talked about the same thing, that we should love one another, love one another. And to me, uh, forgiveness is the most easiest thing that you can do in life. Everybody notice that? It is the easiest thing to do, and yet most people don't do it. Isn't that amazing? They absolutely don't do it. Martin Luther King talked about it. He said that for us not to hate our enemies, but to overcome evil with good, don't hate what we went through, don't hate anything, and then you can maintain freedom. And, you know, I, I counsel with the couple that are getting married today, and that's one of the things that we worked on, is that you should not get married if you still have anger, because angry marriages don't work. Have you noticed that? The morning after the night of the wedding, you wake up and you look, wow, who is this? Did I marry this person, you know? Because that anger is still there. So we worked on on forgiveness before they take the step down the aisle today. If you don't have forgiveness, you don't have love. You really don't have anything. And love, real love, real love, is uh, not hating, not resenting yourself or anyone else, not resenting. In America today, 50% of marriages end in divorce. A little over 50% of marriages end in divorce, and that is because people don't really, the couples don't really love one another. You know, it's a very selfish relationship. You make me feel good, I make you feel good. If you don't make me feel good, I'm not going to make you feel good. You know, you said a bad thing to me, I'm going to say a bad thing to you. You looked at me out of the corner of your eye, I'm going to look at you out of the corner of my eyes. You know, you go cheat on me, I'm going to cheat on you. And that's what's happening in these marriages. There's no sacrifice anymore for anything. And that, that has to stop. There's an attack upon the family today upon marriage, they now have it where, at least in California and about 13, 12 other states, they have it that two men or two women can get married. You heard about that? Y'all heard about that? Isn't that crazy? 
they are changing the order of God. Changing the order, destroying the family. And if you want to destroy a society, destroy the family first. Reorder, rearrange God's order of God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. And that's what's happening. And we got to start fighting back. We have to start fighting back to prevent this from happening to the family. All right? So that's what we do at Barn. And um, this wedding came about in a weird kind of a way. And I'm glad it did. But it was interesting. <laughs> they came in, they said they wanted to get married, but they wanted counseling in advance, you know, counseling before they got married. So we, we did the counseling. And they just wanted a simple walk down the aisle in jeans and T-shirt marriage wedding. <laughs> they just wanted to do it, you know, get it over. And so what happened was we have a women's meeting, a meeting for ladies only every third Thursday night of the month. And for men, it's the first Thursday night of the month. So in the ladies' meetings, I told them that we had a wedding coming up. I said, some members of the church are getting married. And they're like, oh, that's nice. Can we cook for them? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. And I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah, you can do it. They were all excited. So we called up the, the bride and the groom and asked them, could they cook? They were like, yeah. And so one thing led to another one, and now all of you are here as a result of that. They were like, we have about 50 people coming. I'm, I'm like, what? Are you serious? So I'm glad you're here. It's going to be a fun wedding. Any questions for me before we get rolling? Anybody disagree with the anger thing? You agree that you have to overcome anger? Okay. Uh, did you know that if you have anger and you claim to be a child of God, that you are a liar and the truth is not in you? That you're not a child of God? I don't want to get anybody mad before the wedding. Uh, <laughs> too late? <laughs> That's right. You cannot, you cannot be a child of God with anger. It really is because you're separated from God. You have no love. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, I'm wasting a little time here. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. If not, I have some. Yes, ma'am. That's your mother? Wow, welcome, mother. <laughs> yes. Oh, why is it important to get married is the question. Can I, can I repeat the, the question so they know what was asked out there? Okay, yeah. yeah, I'll just repeat it. She want to know why is... Oh, you have a mic, John? Yeah. Oh, okay. Far side. No, no, just do what you do. It's better this way. Oh, it is? Yeah. Why is it important to get married? Do we have any married people on this side of the room? Oh, let's ask the young man first. Why is it in, how long have you been married? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. Wow, good, man. And why is it important to get married? Uh, for, for a man to um, be committed to one another to be committed. and only one another. Oh, okay. So something that was set up by God originally mm -hmm. for a man and woman to be committed to one another. Right. Yeah, that's good. Fifteen years. You like it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still married. <laughs> Still married. Would you do it again if you had to? Uh, yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. yeah, man. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> You're a better man than me, but I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> How long have you been married? About 37 years. Wow. 37 years? Yeah. I wonder what that's like to wake up with the same person 37 years. <laughs> Every morning you, look, you wake up and the same person. That's amazing. Congratulations. Why is it important to get married? I agree with my brother. It was the same thing. And I met my husband when I was a teenager. Wow. So yeah. Has it been tough? Not really. I mean, you have your ups and downs yeah. anyway. You know, most marriages do, but... 
been mostly up for me. Oh, good. <laughs> right on. Well, you look like it. You look pretty yeah. happy. Thank you. <laughs> and that's good. The reason is it's important to get married uh, if you want to have children. If you don't want to have children, there's no reason to get married. Remember God married them and he told them, go make some babies? So other than that, there's no reason to get married. That makes sense? You're married, right? Yes. No children. No children yet. Well, I, I happen to know your husband, and he said next year. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But that's the reason to get married, if you want to have children. And if you don't want to have children, there's no need to get married. You should give your life to God and just be an example for him. Because when you're one with him, I know a lot of people get married because they're lonely. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to be by themselves or need somebody to love them and to love somebody. That's not a good reason to get married because that doesn't last and it doesn't work. Because that kind of love fades out after a while. You know, and that, now you're stuck with somebody that you don't even love and you don't have children with. So if you need love, you need to go to God for the love. Because in all honesty, the love that mankind give to one another, it don't last anyway. You want that real love. So that's why you should get married, if you want to have children. Any other questions? No? Well, I have a question. For those who just uh, arrived, we're going to start the ceremony at 1130. We'll, so she's, she's getting all duty up, and I don't know where Kenneth is. But she get it all prepared, and they'll come down in a few minutes here. All right, so I just kind of talked about what we are about, what we're doing, about our home for young men. We are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man, helping these guys overcome anger, find jobs, start businesses. And we just started a private school this year, this past September, where we're educating the boys and the girls, uh, all that kind of good stuff. And we have some information out there in the lobby on your way out, when you're on your way out. All right, any other questions? No more question. Are you married, sir? Oh, you're married. Come with the mic. Uh, come on over here, Doug. Would it work if he came over here, Doug? Not, not as well, but okay. we weren't set up for Right, I know. But let me just ask him. Come on over here, Doug. <laughs> 30 how many years? 37. Wow. You like it? I love it. Why did you get married? Uh, my high school sweetheart. I mean, oh, that's your wife right there? Yes, sir. High school sweetheart? Yeah. So you've known her all your life almost? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And what's good about being married? You know, being married <laughs> has its ups and downs. More so the companionship. I mean, you know, it's my friend. Yeah. You know, and... Your wife is your friend? Excuse me? Your wife is your friend? Yes. Very He's probably the only man in the world that his wife is his friend. Oh no, no, that's no. good though. No, you got a lot of you got a lot of guys out there that their wife is their friend. Good. Yeah. I haven't ran into him, but that's nice. <laughs> 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 no, but it's it's been you know it's got its ups and downs. You know, yeah. we're fortunate we have three beautiful kids and seven grandchildren. So wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. What's one difficult thing about marriage? Trying to understand what's going on in her head. In her head? Yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said the one difficult thing is trying to understand what's going on in her head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I bet you all the guys who are married can agree with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not hard, but it's not easy either. It's not hard, but it's not easy? Right. Oh, okay. Wow. That's interesting. And you're the wife. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and why did you get married? Because I loved him. You love him? Mm -hmm. Good. Even after 37 years, you still love him? What's the one difficult thing for you about marriage? Nothing really. Nothing for you, huh? Mm -hmm. That's the way it normally is. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> then, the <laughs> man, <laughs> then the man died. <laughs> <But> <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> 
So what do you think about him saying that trying to understand what's going on in our head? What do you think about that? I mean, I don't know. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? Mm. What do you mean by that? You know, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to understand women sometimes, you know. You're doing everything you can to keep them with a smile on their face. It seems like you just don't do enough. And it's like, oh, what else can I do? You know? <laughs> you know, for me to be happy, she need to be happy. Because if she's not happy, man, my life is miserable. <laughs> you agree, huh? <laughs> it's not hard, though. It's just, yeah. you, know. you agree to that? Behind you, John. Like, uh, are you married? I'm, no, not no more. But I would look at marriage like, <laughs> but I would look at marriage though. <laughs> marriage is like, um, it's like having your own yard. You know, you have your yard, and that's your house, your wife. And when you go out there, out there, up and down, you know, everything looks the same. But when you got your own, it's more precious when you have your own yard. Yeah, because you got <laughs> something to come home to every day. Right. Something to look for and something to build up on. How long had you been married for? I was married for 12 years. Really? What happened? Things just didn't work out. It didn't? No, but I'm getting remarried again. Wow. Yeah, so, because I love being married. Marriage, like I say, marriage is like having your own yard. And when you got your own yard, it's very important. What did you learn from that last marriage, the first marriage, that's going to make this second time around better? That you have to, your, your, soul, your, your new spouse has to be your, your best friend. And you and your first wife were not best friends? No. Oh, it okay. was married. I, I just did the things in the wrong way. But this time I'm doing it the right way. Good, man. But I think it'll be a very successful marriage, a long marriage. All right. Forever until death do you part. I wish you well with that. How, um, when is the wedding? Soon. <laughs> soon and very soon. Yes, very soon. Yeah. And so is it this year or next year? Or? Well, it'll be next year now. Next year? Yes. Oh, good, man. Well, I wish you well with that. Thank you. All right. I wish you well. Uh, would you do it more than two times? No, this is it. Like yeah. Michael Jackson said, this is it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I wish you well with that. All right. Okay. We're getting ready here. Any other question? No? All right. You're not married, huh? No. Why not? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have five minutes left? Oh, okay. Why not? Um, because I haven't met a man that can live up to my father. Live up to your dad? Oh, yeah. That ain't going to happen. Well, <laughs> then I, <laughs> they got to be at least him or better. Do for me uh, uh, like he does or better. No marriage for you, then. <laughs> <laughs> you can hang that up. <laughs> They don't even make men like that anymore. <laughs> no. no, so. You I'm, better be trying to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, when you have an example of how something should I know be, what you mean, yeah. It's hard to go with, you know, anything less than that. Wow. <laughs> Richard, yes, sir. did you know she was trying to find someone like you? Yeah, I totally forget it. <laughs> <laughs> These guys don't have that anymore. Yeah, yeah, not in this generation. <laughs> wow. I don't okay. know what to say. Oh, here's my suggestion to you. Maybe you have to find one and then create him in your image. <laughs> <laughs> Shape and form him the way you would like for him to be. Oh, wow. You do want to be married, though? Um, yes, my, in my heart, I do. I'm just not going to... Um, be sad that it's not happening. Good. That's right. If God gives it to mm -hmm. you, then it's, it, then then it's meant to be. Yes. If not, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. I love that. Mm -hmm. I've known her since she was a little girl. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah, well, I'll keep my eye open for you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All the help I can get. <laughs> what age What age range do you want? Oh, that means I'd have to tell my age. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Um, <laughs> People, uh, they'd have to been, when they came home from school, they'd have to watch what's happening, what's happening. Like, if they were came home from school and they were watching what's happening on the TV, then that's around my age. <laughs> that give you guys an idea of... So you're <laughs> looking for someone who's about 50-something years old? <laughs> <laughs> a little 
little bit younger, but yeah, around in there. All right, I'm gonna keep my eyes and ears open for you. Thank you. D does it matter if he's white or black? Mm -mm. You marry anything. <laughs> Long a child of God, it's all <laughs> Never mind the color, huh? Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> all right. I know a few white guys who are looking for some black women. <laughs> I don't know if I qualify, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's going to be hard to find. It will have to be from God to find a man with your dad's values, because these men, for the most part, accept it to the rule don't have those values anymore. They're, they're insecure. They look for women to take care of them. They, when, even when they're riding in the car, the woman is driving. I never thought I'd live to see something like that. And I see that more and more and more. Uh, they're very, they have a lot of fear. I've never seen a society of men who have fear such as men have today. And not all men are like this. But when I was growing up in Alabama, I grew up in Alabama on a plantation. And uh, my grandparents worked the plantation. All that. I left there in 1968. But I grew up with no fear, not of being a man, you know. I used to be afraid to speak up to my mother and grandmother. You know what they'll do to you, right? <laughs> but other than that, I had no fear. I took risk in life, you know. Yeah, and I wasn't educated. I went to a high school. I graduated somehow or another. But I, most of my time was spent in the cotton fields and stuff like that. But because my grandparents had courage and everybody around me had courage, I grew up with courage. But men don't have that nowadays. And there's nothing worse than a man that, with fear. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. But I pray for you, right? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this thing is winding down. Any other questions? Am I wrong, guys, about men? One other, real fast over here. Am I right about men's lady, men, lady? Not all, but most. Yeah. When you say fear, what do you mean by fear? Because when I say, different definitions of fear. Oh, okay. When um, I say fear. Now, let me just say this. Let me give you a little background for me. My parents are from the South, Birmingham, Alabama. Right. And um, because my mother came from a family of 10, it was a lot of them, the women were not pushed to get an education, but my own mother went on and got an education because when I was in the ninth grade, you know, that was one of my uh, role models. So when you say fear, I don't think it's fear. What is it? I think it's the, a lack of knowledge, not knowing what's really out there. So, and well, that's... When I was growing up, we didn't know what was out there. I moved Right, from... but what I'm saying is, like, with my mother, she came from the South, she always wanted to be educated. And when she got to California and got married, she had my brother and I. And then she decided to go back to college, something that she always wanted. Right. And so by me watching that, and, you know, I have friends, you know, and, yeah, they're, they latch on to women, you know, but I don't think that's from that. I just think that's low self-esteem, you know, low and it's not a fear. Oh, low self-esteem is a part of fear. Because when you have fear, you have all that stuff that goes with it. You don't feel good about yourself. You're afraid to take rest. You're looking to someone else to do and think for you and all that kind of stuff. That's what low self-esteem does. You don't believe you can do it on your own, you right. know, that kind of stuff. So it does come from fear. Right. It's like the brothers and sisters of fear. So, and so you, may, you have a point there, but it still comes from fear. Okay. That's why God doesn't want us to have any fear at all. It's possible to live a life with no fear. I absolutely have no fear. And I don't feel like a brave person, but I don't have fear at all. I totally agree with you. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. And I think, Patrick, you doing the music? <laughs> Are we ready, Steph? Whenever I am. I've been ready for 30 minutes. Okay, we want to get uh, Kenneth in here first. Have Kenneth come on in. The wedding is about to begin. Isn't that amazing? 
So if you have any anger, folks, let it go. It's a waste of time to hold on to it. All right? Forgive, forgive, forgive. And don't try to figure out your wife's mind. <laughs> It'll kill you. Let it go. There you go. <laughs> you just do what's right, and she, it'll work out. Do the right thing. Okay, we have Kenneth come on down here. Uh, big old smile. Okay. Made it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you nervous? Yes. You're nervous? Yes. Look around the room and relax. Okay. You know everybody here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just relax. And this Kenneth, this is the same guy. <laughs> you look pretty. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, welcome all the family members and friends of Kenneth and uh, Jamie. Uh, they're happy that you came out uh, this morning. Thank you for that. And um, I have to tell you, it's an honor to perform this wedding. I got a chance to know them, and uh, they're pretty cool. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> God saw that it was not good that man should be alone, so he made a woman to be his helpmate. For this cause shall no man leave... For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and they shall become one. The woman is bound by the law of her husband so long as he live. But if the husband is dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. You understand that, right? He's stuck. <laughs> as long as he's living. <laughs> the husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of him. Husband, love your wife 
as Christ loved you. Kenneth, you understand that, right? Yes, sir. You're the head of your wife. We went over that. All right, don't forget, man. And don't call me up for counseling. <laughs> she is now bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Who giveth this woman away? I'm sorry? I do. You do. All right. Thank you. I, I want to really take a serious pause here and say to the both of you that uh, marriage is a very serious thing. You know, it's an important thing. And the, uh, the promise that you're making today is being made to God. It's like you're telling God, you brought us together, I'm going to make sure I do the right thing. I won't cheat, I won't whatever husbands and wives are doing nowadays. I'll be faithful, I'll be honest. I work hard and protect my family. It's a serious responsibility. And I said early that in this country today, over 50% of marriages are in, in, in a divorce. And I know we have counseled together, and I'm pretty conf- confident that you guys have made a commitment to keep this going. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be rough. You know, you're not going to always agree, but that's life. And if you don't, if you don't resent whatever it is you have to go through, you can overcome anything, all right? And my best advice is to try and work your situations out with you and God. And then if, you, if that doesn't work, find someone that you trust and go to that person and see if they can help you. But do not go to your family members. Do not go to your friends. Do not talk about one another behind each other back to other people. If you have an issue, work it out with each other. Because when you, what I've seen over the last years is that when there are problems between marriages, one or the other person go out and start talking to their girlfriends or male friends, and they're giving you the wrong advice, and they'll end up destroying you. So you have to either go to God, and if that doesn't work, find a minister or someone that you trust, and, and the three of you try to work this out. But you've got to keep it away from family members today. All right? And so remember that. That's been, that mistake's been made so many times. And never, ever, ever, Jamie, <laughs> relax. Never, ever, 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 never, 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 but never, ever, ever, ever go to your girlfriend about your husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Never, ever. Don't do it. All right? That's the worst mistake you can make. Talk to him about it. It doesn't work out. Pray about it, whatever. Talk to a counselor, but after that, drop it. All right? And then your marriage will last forever. Um, if any person present can show just cause why they must not be joined together, let him or her speak now or forever hold your peace. Anybody here see any reason these two should not get married? <laughs> we talked about that yesterday in dress rehearsal. <laughs> They're like, well, I know a person that said they should get married. Another way to not this one. Uh, if either you know any just cause why you should not get married today, speak now or hold your peace. Kenneth, any reason you should not marry this woman? How about you, Jamie? No reason. Are you sure? I'm sure. All right. No reason. Okay, I think we have a song right now. We'll do this song right now. What is it right now? She's doing the song now. Okay, good. So we have a different song right now? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Come on, Margaret. Till you came along 
Okay, I need you guys to join right hands. <laughs> He's like pulling her close. She's like, not yet. <laughs> Do you, Kenneth Eugene Bell, take this woman Jamie Nicole Crawford to be your lawfully wedded wife, do you promise to love her in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, in the bad and the good, and to be true to her until death do you part? I do. Do you Jamie Nicole Crawford, take this man, Kenneth Eugene Bell, to be your lawfully wedded husband. Do you promise to love him in sickness and in health, in poverty and in wealth, in the bad and in the good? Do you promise to uh, cherish him, to honor and obey him, and obey him. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> we had a big issue with the obey thing yesterday. <laughs> she like, is he going to obey me too? <laughs> and obey him in sickness and in health, rich and poor, and the bad and the good, to be true to him in all things, until death do you part. I do. Okay, let me have mommy's ring. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> Stephanie, come and help me. You know which one it is. Once I get rid of it. Give 
same to me. Thank you. Um, before we move forward, you guys want to wash your hands there as a symbol of getting rid of the old and starting anew. And I've already blessed the water, so we can do that now. Can we get some paper towel here or something like that? They are washing their hands as a symbol of washing away the old and starting the new. Here you go. Not yet. Cool out. <laughs> Do you give this ring as a token of your love for her? Yes, I do. And when you take this ring as a token of your love for him, will you wear your ring as a token of your love for him? I do. Okay. You can put it on now. Okay, let me have the other ring. There you go. And do you give this love to him as a token, I mean this ring to him as a token of your love? I do. And will you receive this ring as a token of your love for her? Yes. Okay. Do you want to light the candles now? Oh, oh yeah, they have some rings for you guys, too. I just found that out this morning. <laughs> this is new for me. You going to marry me, baby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. You know you stuck on me for life now, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> you don't mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got one more ring for the bride. Another one? Another one. Because she's just that special. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Do you want to light the candles now? Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay, join hands again. Right hand. Having pledged your faith and love to each other and having uh, spoke your solemn oath, marital vows, by giving and receiving the ring, acting in the authority given me, I pronounce you man and wife in the presence of God and all the witnesses. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for uniting this couple. I thank you, Father, for bringing them together as one. And I ask that you open their eyes, that they may see their hearts, they may understand. And I ask that they allow your will to be done in their lives and in their marriage, uh, on earth, in heaven as it is on earth, that you may be glorified. And I ask, Father, that they be strong and honest and faith 
with one another. I believe without a doubt that if they should follow your will, this is a marriage that will last until death do them part. All in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, Kenneth, I know you've been waiting for this. <laughs> Remember the instructions from yesterday? <laughs> you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> not yet come back uh, yesterday um, Jamie asked does he have to kiss me really hard <laughs> he want to get all into it can he just do a smack how was that kiss it was, it was, it was fine uh, <laughs> uh, turn toward the audience please Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Kenneth Eugene Bell. Okay, you can go now. Again, I want to I want to thank you for go down a bit. I want to thank you again for coming to share this moment with them. It's a very special moment to them and to me, and I'm sure to all of you. And uh, we we of course we're gonna have a a reception right after this, so you're welcome to stay and have some fun with us for a while. Uh, if you want more information about what we're doing, we have a table in the lobby. So pick up some information out there. And I want to say to all of you, Merry Christmas. And if I don't see you, Happy New Year. All right, be safe. Thank you so much. For more information, to purchase a copy of this program, or to make a donation, visit us on the web at bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-2663. That's 1-800-411-BOND.